That way, whenever we have something going on or whenever a message pops up, you automatically get all of the notifications. Amen. So go ahead and share that with everyone. I'm going to go ahead and just talk to the Lord. Lord, we thank you so much for this night. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you are a groundbreaker. You are a God uh, of the breakthrough. And so we come tonight, Lord, just, just with our hearts open ready to receive a word from you. So I ask that you just speak through me. Use me in any way you see fit, Lord, for those who are listening. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name, wherever you are, just shout a big amen. <laughs> amen. Look, I'm so elated that you joined us tonight. And I want to talk about something tonight that I think a, 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 a lot of people through this COVID, I mean, I was talking to someone the other day, and they was like, they just, people around them, they just feel like people are, are giving up. They're tired of being, you know, uh, in one place with one person or with certain people. And, and, and they was even telling me themselves that, hey, I, I just feel like I'm at the end of my rope. I feel like giving up. I don't have the strength. You know, I'm feeling like giving up on my career because, you know, with the COVID, things have changed. And. I even feel like giving up on my marriage. And so I want to talk about something today. I want to talk about finding strength to keep going when I'm emotionally worn out. Worn out. Finding strength to keep going when I'm emotionally worn out. Now, I'm not talking about physical fatigue or physical, physically being worn out because that, that's easy to cure. You know, a lot of times that just comes with sleep and rest and eating right or whatever it, it may be. But what I'm talking about tonight is when we have those emotional overloads. Um, for some, this COVID has been an emotional overload. That there, there are many times where you need to keep going when your mind and emotions have somewhat given up. Let me say that again. There are many times when you, we, need to keep going when emotionally our, our, our minds, our emotions have somewhat already given up. They've already stepped out the door. They already walked away. You know, we've already, you know, packed the bags emotionally uh, and, 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 and walked out the door or left the job or do, did this. So I want to I deal with you know, four factors. I want to deal with four things tonight uh, from God's word uh, on how to keep going when you feel like, when you feel like it's just time for you to give up. Now, there are two examples of, of two people, you know, and we're going to deal with the four factors because I, I want this to be simplicity. I want this to be to where application is needed for this message. Uh, but there are two people who, who you can see in scripture, I mean many more, but two people I want to point out that you can see that, that just, just would not give up when, when emotionally they could have just, just gave up, they, but they had the determination. Uh, one was, of course, Jesus. Uh, there was an opportunity or this, this particular uh, situation where they're telling them to give up. You know, they're telling, telling Jesus, you know, hang up the towel. You know, whatever you preaching, it ain't going. You know, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they's already upset because Jesus is teaching something totally different. And the people are beginning to follow him. And then Jesus, in the midst of them trying to get him to give up and, and, and trying to, to rack his emotions, uh, they send word that Herod is looking for him. And, and, and they're like, you know, in Luke chapter 13, uh, verse 30, 32, it says, At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. And in verse 30, 32, I think that's verse 31 was the first one, this verse 32, he replied, You go tell that fox. And <laughs> Jesus was straightforward. He said, you tell that fox, I will keep on driving out demons. I'll keep on healing people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, 
I will reach my goal. In any case, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of who trying to stop me, in any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day. Man, what a great attitude. And that's the attitude that we have to have at, at times where we're saying there's nothing that's going to stop me. There's no fear. There's no uh, uh, opposition of a, of a person that can stop me, not today, not tomorrow, not next year, not in years to come, because I have to keep pressing on. There was also Paul who was determined to keep going on in spite of his pain over in 2 Corinthians. And we know how much pain Paul went through. I mean, being scorched and beaten and, you know, uh, uh, thrown over a cliff and, and in prison for so many years. Paul says over in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, he says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, on every side. But we're not crushed. We, were, we are perplexed. But we're not driven to despair. We, we don't give up and quit. We, we, we understand that there's trouble and there's all kind of things that's coming at us. But we don't have the attitude to give up and quit. We're hunted down. But we're never abandoned by God. Ooh, that's key. We're never abandoned by God. We get knocked down. But we are not destroyed. Why? Because when we get knocked down, we just get up and we keep going. And it, 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 it gets confusing sometimes, but hey, we, we don't know why we're going through what we're going through or why this is attacking me or why that is happening, but we, we just we refuse to, to give up. That's it. You know, what do we get that kind of strength when, when we feel like we're worn out emotionally, when we feel like we're drained, when we feel like there's nothing else that we have to give? Well, a simple answer, which would be what a lot of people would just give you, would just be you get that strength from God. And that is true. But we don't want to give you the simple answer. We want to give you the application of how to grab that strength from God when you feel like giving up. You do believe in God, don't you? You do believe he is who he is, that he created heaven and earth and you know, he gives you, you know, he created heaven and earth. He created man. He created the birds, the bees. You do believe that's who is God. So we want to look at four key actions and attitudes that we need to draw strength from God when we feel like we were worn out because we've all been there. Now, the first key, the first key is to honestly tell God what I'm feeling. If I'm worn out, I just got to be honest with them. If I feel like giving up, I just got to be honest with them. If I feel like hitting somebody, I just got to be honest with them. If I feel like walking out the door and quitting, if I, I'm just worn out emotionally, I mean, whether it's on your job, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in your children, the first key to being able to draw strength from God is to, to honestly tell God what we're feeling. We do it with our friends. We do it with our coworkers. We do it with our, our associates. And they can't help us like God. The first key to drawing strength from God is just to pour it out. Well, can I really do that as a Christian? Well, 1 Peter uh, 5 and 7 says, unload all your burdens. This is the New Jerusalem Bible. Unload all your burdens onto him since he is concerned about you. You, you know what that, uh, that word unload means in the Greek? Just drop it right there. Just drop it. Just let it go. Just to just drop it. God is saying, God, God is sharing with us, you know, j j j just unload it on me. Why? Because I'm concerned about you. But how do I do that? By just being honest with him. How do I unload my burdens and my cares and my an anxieties on, on to God by just being honest, by just being honest. Ain't no, no need to sugarcoating it. Ain't no need. Can I, can I just throw three factors at you on why you should truly just be honest with God and tell him exactly how you feel? One 
is because God already knows every emotion that we feel. Psalms 33 and 15 says, the Lord gave us each a mind and nothing we do can be hidden from him. If he created your mind, obviously he can read it. It's just like, you know, a person who creates a computer. You take it back to them, why? Because if something malfunctions, they know why. Because they, they, they produced it from the beginning. And God knows your mind. He just wants you to, to be able to share with him how you actually feel. When I confess my, my, my feelings to God, it's not for God. When I confess my feelings to God, it's for me. Why? Because now I'm unloading something that I've been holding on to. You know, I, sometimes you have that friend and you just say, I just need somebody to talk to about that. I just need to get that off my chest. Well, God is saying, if, you, if there's something that you really need to get off your chest, just unload it on me. Why? It ain't for God. It's for you. It's for your benefit because it begins to relieve that stress you've been holding on to and all of that inner conflict. Another fact why you should just truly be honest with God is because God understands your feelings better than you do. God understands my feelings better than I do. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9, the Lord knows what is in everyone's mind. He understands everything you think. If you go to him for help, you will get an answer. Man, that is good. That is good. He understands everything you If you come to me for help, then I can get you an answer. So what if I don't go through to him for help? Why should you be expecting an answer? God said, I understand everything that's in your mind. I, 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 I seriously doubt if I understand everything that I think. Sometimes you know how you think something. You're like, where did it come from? God understands. He understands all of your emotions. He understands all of your thoughts. He understands all of your feelings. God understands. Somebody say, he understands my feelings better than I do. The third fact is because God loves to listen to me. Oh, that's going to bless somebody right there. You think you're getting on God's uh, nerve? No. Psalms 116, 1 through 2 says, I am passionately, this is, this is David. He, he got it, man. David said, I am passionately in love with God because he listens to me. He hears my prayers and he does what? And he answers them. And as long as I live, I'll keep praying to him for he just stoops down to listen to my heart's cry. What, what, what is it that you want to cry to God about? Because he, he'll stoop down and he'll pay so much attention to you. The third is the reason why we should tell God how we're feeling is because God is never too busy for us. God doesn't have an answering machine. It's press one for God. Press, press two for Jesus. Press three. God doesn't do that. He has an unlimited data plan where he's always listening. His, his line, what, 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 what was the, the song where you see Jesus on the main line? Tell, there's never, there's never a moment where God is not ready and willing to listen to you. He doesn't have a personal answer machine. He is there and he's waiting for you to cry out to him. He's never too busy. He's never too busy for you. God can handle your complaints. God can handle your troubles. God can handle your grudges. God can handle your concerns. God can handle uh, your emotions. He can, answer, uh, he can handle your questions. He can handle your frustrations. He can, he can handle your emotional wear and tear. God can handle, he, he, he made us to listen to us. And guess what? He made us to love us. Oh, man, you just need to handle, you need to remind yourself of that. You need to remind yourself 
uh, of that God's love is based upon who he is. John caught hold of it. He said, God is love. Uh, Psalms 103 and 13 says, the same way a loving father feels toward his children, that's but a sample of your tender feelings toward us, your beloved children who live in awe of you. That's, that's, the, that's the God we serve. That's our father as a father. Think about this for you all, you parents who are out there. I mean, I have a son as a father. The, 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 I, I love when my son wants to talk to me about anything. I love when he wants to talk to, about, to me about anything and just wants to open up his heart. Because my ears, because of my love for him, my ears are always ready to sit, to sit and listen to him. And God's, God is saying, when, when you are distressed, when you feel feeble, uh, when, you, when you feel emotionally exhausted, when you feel uh, like you're just ready to give up, he said, just come quickly to me and let me know how you feel. Lamentations 2 and 19 puts it this way. Get up. This is God talking. He's talking to your heart right now. He says, get up. Cry out in the night. Even as the night begins, pour out your heart like water in prayer to the Lord. As the issue begins, don't put it off. Don't, don't try to wait until tomorrow. Don't try to wait until next week. He says, pour your heart out as the night begins. Weeping may endure for a night. As the night begins, he says, pour out your heart like water in prayer to the Lord. Man, that's good. H have you been sincerely doing this in your life? Because if not, for some of us, that may be why we are emotionally drained. I mean, this, this pandemic has probably gotten everyone in some type of way. All of us have been affected. But God is saying, in, 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 in when the night begins, go ahead, pour your heart out to me like water in prayer. Oh, that's good. Did you hear the urgency in that? He's saying right now, get to it right now. Pour out your heart. Lord, I can't handle this. Lord, I'm stressed. Lord, I'm about to give up. He's saying pour out your heart. This could be the key. This could be the true key for someone to gain the daily strength that you need, especially in the midst of all this mess. So the first key is to honestly tell God what you're feeling. The second key to being able to get this strength that you need in the midst of, 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 of your emotional drainage is to humbly, somebody say humbly, ask God for strength. First key is just pour out my heart to him. And then the second key is to humbly ask God for strength. Psalms 105 and 4 says, look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. This is so important because he's saying seek his face, not his hand. Uh, this, this, I, I remember when I learned this. I heard uh, someone teaching this, that, that we always seek him what's in his hand, but we don't seek his presence. And the word says to seek his face always. Look, don't look for other sources. You know, humbly. Means, Lord, I, I put you over everyone else. You're first in rank. You, you know, you're first in position. Anyone else in, my, anyone else in my life can, don't hold the strength that I need. <laughs> I need that from God. Job 12 and 13, Job in the middle of, of his mess, he said, God is the real source of wisdom and strength. God is the real source of wisdom and strength. Always rely on the real source. Always rely on the real source. If we really believe this, why don't we just do it every day? If we really believe that God is the true source, he's the true strength, why don't we do it every day? Because every day, because a lot of us need it every day. So why don't we do it every day? If we re could keep asking Him for strength every day, as you see the results, 
Uh, what does the word say? We have not because what? We ask not. But the more you ask for strength, the more you begin to see those results that, that you need to see. Uh, Psalms 138 and 3, the Living Bible says, When I pray, Lord, you answer me, and you encourage me by giving me the strength that I need. The more I see those results and the more I see that I'm getting stronger in this thing, the more it encourages me. And the more I see that those results, the more that I just want to humbly go for him and just continue to ask him for more strength. So how do I get strength? How do I get that strength that, that from God? I ask God for it in prayer, humbly. It's, uh, uh, you know, what, David in a stressful situation, he's trying to get an answer from God. He goes on this fast. And all of a sudden at the end of, you know, pretty much at the end of the fast over in Daniel chapter 10, verse 11, uh, he says, and the man said to me, Daniel, you're very precious to God. He's saying the same thing to some of you all. So listen carefully to what I have to say to you. Since the first day you begin to pray for understanding and to humble yourself, humble, humble, underline that word, highlight it if, you, if you're looking in your Bibles, humble yourself before your God. Your request has been heard in heaven. I have come in answer to your prayer. He says, when you pray, when you humble yourself, Humble is a big word. When you prayed and humble your, humbled yourself, God answered you. Man, you didn't get the answer the first day. You didn't get the answer the second day. But he had already sent it. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> That's the attitude that moves God, is when you humbly, when you humbly come to him for the answer, you know you don't have the answer. You know you don't have to. You don't know how to get out of that mess. You know you don't have. You don't. You don't know how to change that person. You know you don't know how to deal with them kids. You know you don't know how to deal with that coworker. They just fire you up every time. You know you don't know how to deal with that boss or or, or that manager or the the CEO or whoever it is. But the attitude that God is looking for, so that He can get you an answer, is that for you to come to Him humbly, somebody say in humility, and ask him for the answer. It's not just a prayer of, Lord, give me, give me, give me. It's not them prayers, you know, where we, we have memorized those cliches, now I lay me down to sleep, you know, you know, Lord bless us, may this be for the nourishment of my body, you know. It, it's not about those cliches. These are humble prayers that we need to go to God, God in. You know, and, and say, God, you know, this is how I feel, and I need your strength. So let's review. We, we went to a couple. If I need strength to keep going, how do I get that strength when I just want to do nothing? One, you honestly tell God how you feel. Lay it out, lay it out, lay your heart out. And number two, you humbly ask God for strength. Now, the third key is to gratefully thank God for all that's good despite all that's bad. To humbly, to gratefully thank God for all that's good despite all that is bad. The third key to having the strength to keep going on is the word grateful. What we call it, the the attitude, the, the attitude of gratitude. First Thessalonians puts it this way. It, it sums it up. Give thanks in all circumstances. Now, I'm telling you, I did a... I finally got it. All means all. <laughs> it means all. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God's will for all our lives is, is to, to, to give thanks in all our circumstances. 
It, 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 just notice it said give thanks in, not for. We don't thank God. Who, who wants to thank God for cancer? Who wants to thank God because, you know, you just got thrown out of your house or you just lost your car or you just lost your job? We don't give thanks for. He's saying, but why are you in it? Go ahead and have an attitude of gratitude. Go ahead and, and thank God uh, while you're in it, while you're going through it. You may not like it. It might not be the best situation for you. I've said this a million times. I used to work on a job. I hate it. That job. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Some of y'all feel the same way. I hated that job. But every morning I got up and I got to work, I went outside by my old lonesome and I looked up to the sky and I said, Lord, thank you for this job. What were you doing, Frank? I was giving thanks in a situation and a circumstance that Lord knows I did not want to be in. So he says, give thanks. This could be one of the healthiest emotions that humans could have is to be able to pull the strength out to thank God in the midst of a circumstance that they know they don't like. Every time you stop and take time to express gratitude, you know what it, it does? It refills your empty emotional gas tank. Every time I went out there and thanked God for that job, it gave me an attitude to go out there and do the best job I could. Mm. Lord have mercy. Boy, that was for somebody because it's easy. Easy like Sunday morning. Now, it's easy to have an attitude of gratitude when everything's going good. It's easy to have an attitude of gratitude when 80% of your life is going good. It's easy to have an attitude of gratitude when everything looks fine and hunkadory. But what about when it gets a little sticky? What about when the opposition grows? What about when the situation gets worse? He's saying, in all things, give thanks. Why? It's God's will. It's God's will. It's God's will for me to do that. Choosing gratitude over complaining will change your entire perspective about something that you're dealing with right now. I'm telling you right now. And I don't know about you, but I learned a long time ago, complaining don't help the situation at all. I'm just putting more in my spirit that shouldn't be there. And some people get empty because their perspective is, is off. You know, it's important when we look at the story of Job, and Job went through this terrible situation. We all know about the story of Job. Job is just moseling on with his life. He's having the best time, you know. He's rich. He got children. He got stock. He got land. Matter of fact, he was the richest man in the land at the time. And all of a sudden, one day, everything changes. All of a sudden, you know, it come these terrorists, <laughs> call them terrorists, and just goes in and just, just steals his stuff, takes his stuff. A wind comes and, and it tears up and kills his kids. And then all, you know, all this in one day, just his whole life changed. And then he gets sick and has these bars on him and all kind of stuff is going on. And the word says in Job chapter 1, verse 20, then Job got up. This is kind of Job chapter 1 verse 20 through 22, 20 through 22, Job got up and tore his clothes in grief. He's in grief. He's in a bad situation, a bad circumstance. He shaved his head. He threw himself face down on the ground. Basically, he worshiped God. That's what the NIV, he worshiped God in the midst of him in grief. One of the worst situations that he could ever be in, lost everything he, could, he had. But the word says that he threw himself down on the ground and he began to worship God. And he said, I was born with nothing. This is perspective. I was born with nothing and I would die with nothing. The Lord gave. Now the Lord is taken away. But may his name be praised. In spite of everything that had happened, Job did not sin by blaming God. He praised God in spite of, of everything. Now, that's an attitude of gratitude. 
That's gratitude. He praised God. He said, I was born like this. I'll die with nothing. The Lord has given, may his name be praised, out of everything when he could find nothing physical, when he could find nothing in his life that, was, that he could praise about, guess what? He just praised God for who he knew he was. Ooh, boy. When he could find nothing, when, when he could find nothing that was going right and nothing that was going according to his plan, you know what he did? He praised God's character. He worshiped God for his character. I don't know what's going on, God, but I know who you are. I, I don't know what's happening, but I still know who you are. You still sit on the throne, and if anybody can change this right here, and if anybody can give me the strength to deal with this issue, I know it's you. So in spite of all going on, that's going on, I'm going to have an attitude of gratitude, and I'm going to worship and praise you for your character because I know who you are. Mm. Mm -mm. I, I don't know what's sapping or, or draining your strength today, but I know the antidote. And one of the antidotes right now is personal worship. It's personal worship. It's per There's been time where I, I know I was dealing with issues, but when I come into the house of the Lord or when, I, when I'm at home and I begin to worship, that, that issue that seemed to be so big because now I put God in front of it. It seems so small. Because the, the bigger I make God in my worship, the smaller my issues look. So it was, it was personal worship. Psalm 69, 32, David says, those, those who worship God will be encouraged. Will be encouraged. Those who worship him will be encouraged. Personal worship encourages you on the inside because it reminds you of God's character. So that's number three. The fourth factor is to constantly keep God as your focus. To constantly, that's one thing about Jesus, he never allowed himself to get distracted. Don't let yourself be distracted by less important things, you know, news, social media, some of them family members, some of them friends, some of them issues. Don't allow yourself to, to get distracted by less important things. Like I say, even Jesus had to keep focus so that he could uh, 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 keep himself on track so that he can finish his course. The writer of Hebrews says, Hebrews 12 and 2 through 3, we must focus on Jesus, the source and goal of our faith. He saw the joy ahead of him, so he endured death on the cross and ignored the disgrace it brought him. Now he holds the honored position, the one next to God the Father on the heavenly throne. So when you're dealing with issues, think about Jesus who endured opposition from sinners so that you don't become tired and give up. Oh, that is good. When you're dealing with something, think about Jesus. Think about what he went through. Think about what he endured. And the reason why Jesus was able to, to keep going strong was because of what he was focused on. He looked long term. He looked past the cross. <laughs> Woo, boy. He looked past the cross and saw heaven. He looked past the cross and, and saw that sinners would be forgiven. He looked past the cross and saw that by his stripes we'll be healed. The reason why Jesus was able to endure was because he was looking long term. And there, that when you get to a point where you're always looking short term, you always be distracted. You always be focused on the wrong thing. And that's why it says look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus, uh, uh, who endured opposition. Look, look unto, unto Jesus, who saw the joy, the results of head of, ahead of him. And that's why he, in, he was able to endure the cross, and he, he ignored everything else. Mm, mm, mm. 
So the question is, what do you think about most these days? Do you mostly think short term or do you mostly think long term? Maybe that could be the emotional turmoil that someone is dealing with today because the only thing you're looking at is the short term, what's happening now. And God's word is trying to get us to get to a point where we're more focused on what could come out of what you're dealing with if you just keep the faith and focus on the long term. Um, 2 Corinthians 4 and 16, 17 and 18, it puts it this way. That is why we never give up. Why? Because our spirits are renewed every day. That, that's why we're going to do these four factors. That there's more, but we're we going to start here with these four factors. And we're going to read God's word. How do you renew your spirit? By God's word. You can't just hear the word every Sunday and say, oh, that was a good message, Pastor. I'll see you next Sunday. And you don't apply it. You don't do nothing with it. You don't go back and read it. You don't go back and listen to the message. I, even, I don't even remember my messages, all my messages from Sunday. I have to go back and listen to it because I don't remember it all. I'm sure you don't either. So you want to get renewed in your spirit. You have to find a way to get into God's word. It says, for our present troubles are small, and they won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. Verse 18, so we don't look at the troubles we can see now. We don't look in short term. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be long term. For the things we see now will be gone short term. But the things we cannot see will last forever long term. <laughs> Woo! This is the difference between short term thinking and long term thinking. I cannot allow these issues in my life right now to keep me distracted from where God is trying to take me. Because he will give me the strength to deal with whatever I need to deal with. This is where we pull our strength from. These, are, these four things, the, this is where we pull our strength from. I'm going to tell you, go back and listen to this message for anyone, and you may not be dealing with any emotional stress today, but you may know someone, or you may be dealing with it in months to come. Someone may lose their job. We, know, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but, but this is where we pull our strength from. You've got to be able to honestly Honestly tell God how you feel. You've, you've got to be able to humbly ask him for strength. You, you have to get to a point where number three tells us that you have to gratefully thank God for all that's good, despite all that you're going through that may be bad, and to constantly keep God as, as our focus. That, that's what God, and this is my prayer for you as I close out in Colossians chapter 1. Verse 11 from the Living Bible. It says, we are praying too that you will be filled with his mighty, glorious strength so that you can keep going no matter what happens, always full of the joy of the Lord. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So I want to thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Look, if you're watching us tonight, and, and, and you haven't received Jesus or you don't know, you know, you're wondering, you know, have I been down that road? Have I met Jesus? We want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. Look, it's very simple. The Bible says believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that he died, but God rose him on the third day. And so if you don't mind, wherever you are, whoever is listening, if you'll repeat after me, say, Father, say, I need your strength. Say, I need the life that you want me to have. Say, I believe that Jesus died on the cross, and I believe that you rose him from the dead. I receive you into my life right now, Jesus. Look, if you humbly 
with your heart and believe. Pray that prayer with me. You have just received Jesus into your life. And so we want to give that opportunity to, to go to our website and go to victoryworldwide.org, go to uh, become a member, and scroll that tab and put in your information and let us know that you just got saved or even if you want to become a member. Uh, just go to that information and, and put your, that, that uh, website in that tab and put your information in and someone will give you a call. Also, as we end, hey, if you'd like to be a giver tonight, if you'd like to, to give a seed or you'd like to pay your tithes and offerings or whatever it may be, whatever the Lord lays on your heart, we're just so happy and honored that you, you took time to watch us tonight. And we don't take that for granted. So if you would like to give, the information is on your screen. Uh, you know, So just let the Lord lead you. But join us again this Sunday at 9 a.m., every Sunday at 9 a.m., and we will be back next Tuesday at 7 p.m., but until then, we hope you have a blessed night. We hope you have a blessed week, and I pray that you pour all the strength that you need from God so that you won't give up, cave in, and quit, because I promise you, he's trying to take you somewhere. Have a blessed night, and we'll talk to you later. Amen.